Hello everybody, quick program note. I knew I was getting up around 200 videos and when I uploaded the last one for the uh, Yashica FR2, I realized I had 200 videos. So I went looking around and I had a not particularly good animation of a lunar eclipse. I had just dumped it uh, on YouTube as some place to store it so I could show it, to, I think, to my brother. Anyway, I deleted that so this is the 200th video that's about the 52 cameras project. And I diverged somewhat. It started out a camera per week. So the week number, the episode number, the camera number, they all matched. Um, it was at number 115. I did a couple of episodes on using the Minolta Maxim uh, 7000 and those two had individual episode numbers and then at 140 I did two episodes on respooling 620 and using the Ansco Ready Flash but I wasn't consistent because there it was 140 episode 140 part 1 part 2 so anyway distinct camera types not counting you know, if I have two copies of something that I've shot with, this is the 196th camera here at the 200th episode. So, anyway, with that out of the way, our next camera is the Canon AL1QF. Uh, it's from 1982. There was a silver-bodied uh, one as well as this black model. But even the silver one is just painted to look like metal. Really, the whole thing is some kind of really strong polycarbonate. Um, this is an early endeavor into research on autofocus. It's not an autofocus, but it has marks on the mirror. And I'll get a still so you can actually see that so that light can pass through it and go to a charge coupled phase detection array down in the bottom of the mirror box and when the phase matches it's in focus it has red arrows in the viewfinder showing you which direction you need to move your focus and then when you've got the focus there's a green dot right in the middle at the bottom of the viewfinder it's not a super high spec camera, but it's not horrible either. Uh, it has an electronically controlled, horizontally traveling cloth shutter. Uh, it goes from two seconds to one one thousandth of a second. There are a few manually se selectable speeds. Um, they're full stops from one fifteenth of a second up to a thousandth, plus bulb. When you're set to A, um, the shutter is stepless, so the shutter speed will try the camera's best to match it exactly, not in necessarily in a full stop. It uses FD lenses, just like all of the old Canons, but this one, strangely enough, is aperture priority. Um, almost all of these, other than when you were running full manual, were shutter priority auto exposure. So because of that, you need to make sure that whatever lens you have mounted is not set at A. Because with the uh, lens set at A, you pick the shutter and then the camera chooses the, the appropriate aperture for right exposure. Because this guy's backwards, you want to set your aperture and then the camera body is uh, selecting your shutter for you. It meters using a silicon photocell. That's nice. It uh, responds quite a bit quicker than cadmium sulfide, where if you were in bright light, you had to let the thing recover for a little while before you could meter in low light. So the, the silicon cell on this is really responsive. A half press enables the meter, and you can see the, uh, the meter needle jump up. It shows you what the shutter speed it's selecting along the right side of the viewfinder. The half press does not lock exposure. There's no auto exposure lock on this guy. And there's also 
not really exposure compensation. Although this button right here, which looks like it should be a lens release, um, is a backlight control. You push that in and you can see your uh, meter needle drop down by one and a half steps. Um, this guy does need batteries even for the manually selected one because the timing of the shutter is all electronic control. So you need to make sure that you set um, your film speed. You push this little button to enable it and then you spin this bit uh, just underneath the rewind knob. And that's settable from uh, 25 to 1600. Uh, this little button here is battery check. There's not a light or anything. Just if your needle jumps up, your batteries are working. Um, speaking of batteries, good and bad, it uses triple A's. Really, really common batteries. That's great. And like the film counter on the FR series, the Yashica, a really weak spot after these get old. This guy's battery door. I've never seen one of these that didn't have a broken or kludged or repaired battery door. I've got some blue painter tape on there. Um, I like this stuff. If I'm not using it for light, or I'll use the black. Um, just because it doesn't leave residue, because this thing was really gummed up with some kind of packing tape when I got it. And it looks pretty ghetto, so nobody's likely to steal it. It has a 10 second self timer. And this little uh, switch by the shutter switch, when it's L, it's locked. A, you're in normal shooting mode, auto, I guess. And then S, for whatever reason, uh, is your self timer. And it blinks the LED on the front and the top deck. And that's good for about 10 seconds. And if you want to cancel it, just move that switch back to A or to lock and it turns off the self-timer. That's also electronically controlled. Has a normal uh, screw-in cable release. That's pretty sweet. It only has one extra pin on the, uh, on the hot shoe and the speed lights, the Canon speed lights, that were about the same vintage as this, they would uh, talk to the camera and your shutter speed automatically set to a 60th of a second. Uh, obviously, if you were using something that just uses the center contact, you got to manually set it over to a 60th of a second. It's got a little lightning bolt to let you know that that's your flash setting speed. Um, the lens that I got with the body is this Tokina 28 to 70. Um, it's f three and a half, f 3.5 at uh, 28 millimeters, and then widest at 70 is f4.5 and an interesting thing if you're at 28 your focus ring stops at its close focus I think it's about two feet but once you move off of 28 millimeters then you can move your focus over and it gives you macro ranges and like a lot of these walking around lenses I've been shooting with recently it's not true macro but this is good for a one to four reproduction. So, you know, what you're going to get is going to be a quarter life size. Still, that's not bad. Um, on some lens kind of forums, camera forums, people have really hated on this lens. Um, you know, saying, don't waste your money even if it's five bucks. Honestly, I like it. It's a good range. It has some decent macro. And the thing is sharp. It doesn't have much fall off in the corners. Um, you know, I haven't done rigorous tests with uh, lines or anything like that, but I like it. You know, and it's cool that I got it. Um, I did shoot uh, part of a roll of slide film in this guy. I was finishing up the roll that I was shooting in the uh, Canon SureShot Ace. And then I shot about a half a roll of some horrendously expired uh, T-Max black and white. Haven't processed that yet, but as soon as I have images, I'll put them over on the blog. So I'm deciding what I want to shoot with, uh, try and do something special when I'm actually at my 200th camera. 
So until then, I'll see you then.